The state of New York has decided to regulate who sleeps over at your place. A newly passed bill bans people from renting out their apartments on sites like Airbnb for fewer than 30 days. The question is why interests are competing, which is the most important. Joining us now is New York State Senator Liz Kruger. She co-sponsored the bill. Senator, thanks all for coming on tonight. My pleasure. So I think most people kind of assume they have a right to decide who spends the night at their place. Why don't they? Well, if you're living in your own place and you want to rent out part of it, um, say the bedroom, or you want to sleep on the couch and rent out your bedroom, that's fine. This is the issue of renting out apartments intended for residential use to other people as quote-unquote illegal hotel rooms. Okay, but I'm, I'm sort of missing the distinction. If it's my place, if it's not my place, it's between me and the landlord, not you in the state of New York. But if it's my place, why should I be allowed to have anyone I want over on whatever terms I choose? Again, if it's a single family home, a double family home, fine. But if it's an apartment, it's not your place. It's the landlord who owns the place and your neighbors have rights also. So you're not allowed to have um, people come and move in without your being there for less than 30 days. That's right. the law. That's actually been the law since 1911. 2011. No, I, I know it's, but sometimes it's worth reassessing why we have these laws. You know, go up the mental attic, see what's up there. You know, is it still worth having? So my sense is that the complaints are not coming from neighbors so much. That could be handled more locally than statewide. But from the hospitality industry that sees a threat from Airbnb and sites like, sites like it, they're giving a ton of money to politicians. I don't know if you've taken any money from them, but lots of others have, because they don't want competition. Right? Well, actually, my complaints come from my constituents, the people who live in these buildings, the 80-year-old woman who says there are strangers with keys coming in and out of my building. I'm scared. People who say our children can't run around the hallways anymore because we don't know who's coming in and out. Landlords who say I'm trying to stop this and I can't get my arms around it. So in fact, the complaints that drove the legislation I passed in 2010 and the complaints yeah. that drove the legislation that just passed this year, increasing fines, has been driven by real life people huh. living in apartments here in New York City. Well, you make an entirely fair point, I have to say. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that either at yeah. all. And so, we have yeah, people no, I, who I put it. their life savings into buying a condominium, yeah. moving their families in, and suddenly discover that somebody has set up an illegal hotel arrangement in the apartments around them. You know, there's a reason why there are different standards for hotels. Increased security, more levels of um, egress to come and go, higher fire standards, because right. there's more people coming and going. Residential buildings aren't designed for this purpose. And of course, as more and more units come off the market in a city like New York, where we're desperate for affordable housing, it's actually having the impact of raising everybody's rents and making it tougher for people who live here oh, to find some place to live. Okay, so that, that's where you lost me. I have to say, you kind of convinced me on the first part. I didn't expect to be won over, but you won me over. But on the cost of living in New York City, that is a lot your fault. I mean, rent control makes apartment space more scarce than it would otherwise be. And as you, I don't know a single person with a rent control department in New York City who's not rich. So it's not helping the poor, and you know that because you okay. live on the Upper East Side. No, actually, if you look at the data, first of all, rent control is a very small program at this point. It's only people who have been in apartments since um, basically before 1974. Rent, rent stabilized, stabilized is the bigger right. universe. The average exactly. household in rent stabilized is earning about 30, 32,000 a year. It's not the rich. And there's not one apartment that's been built since 1974 under rent stabilization where the landlord developer said, I want to be in the program. They don't have to be, they chose to be okay, to get but, tax reductions. Okay, but you know, oh, right, so the public's subsidizing this. But you know as well as I, I know the neighborhood you live in, you know affluent people who live in rent controlled or rent stabilized apartments. You know, I know you do, because everybody does in New York City. And that's totally unfair. And it does make everyone else's rent go up. And so why not get rid of that? Because well, it doesn't help. It's a separate question than the Airbnb question. It is, it is a separate okay. question, but you raise scarcity. Fair so, enough. And scarcity has lots of answers and solutions. In a perfect world, would we have the model of, of rent regulation? No. But in a city where over a million people who would have nowhere else to go would actually end up losing their apartments if we did away with rent regulation, that's not an option for us. We need to preserve affordable housing, which includes not allowing Airbnb illegal hoteling to take apartments off the market. We need to try to build more affordable housing throughout the five boroughs. 
but none of this is going to get done overnight, and illegal hoteling is just making it worse. Yeah, and more jobs that aren't necessarily in finance or the service industry might help too. But you kind of got me. If I was living in an apartment building, all of a sudden there are a bunch of randoms with keys on the on the hallway, I wouldn't I wouldn't like it either. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you very so much. It was interesting. Senator.